In Victoria's high country, a quiet battle has been raging for decades. At its heart is a predator long in the sights of local hunters. The debate is so charged that this hunter didn't want to speak on camera, but he did agree to show 730 what it takes to hunt this animal down. It turns out even its name is disputed. To some, it is a dingo, a native animal to be protected. To others, a wild dog, a pest that must be eradicated. How can man's best friend be a dog when they're doing this to the native dogs of our land? I'd love to offer a sacrificial animal, you know, once a week so they don't destroy everything, but that's just not how it works. Many dingoes that have been caught in traps uh, haven't even been found to be consuming lamb or sheep. Dingo and wild dog are, are euphemisms. They're, they're two words for the same thing. <laughs> It's just after sunrise on Paul Diamond's sheep and cattle property near Mansfield in country Victoria, and the third generation farmer is inspecting his flock. Ali, come behind. Here, here. Go way behind. Here, no. I did notice one that looked a bit doughy on the back legs when we brought her in, so I'm just trying to find her now just to see if it's an old dog bite. So I'll put her in the pen by herself so she doesn't get trampled. Two years ago, these daily inspections became a grim ritual. I would just get up and dread what I was going to see that day and in which paddock. It's just one of the most disheartening things that you have to deal with because, you know, this is my job to protect these animals. Graphic photos show what he discovered as his sheep fell victim to a series of attacks. Trail camera footage revealed the culprit. We saw it, a, a dog running through the paddock under a spotlight. I've heard of stories of them just going straight for the jugular uh, and just ripping out its throat and its back end. Here, Ali. Paul says he lost a total of 60 sheep over one six-week period, costing him around $16,000. It got to a point where I was like, right, now I've got to budget 2 to 5% stock loss because of wild dog. I realised I was battling two black dogs, being the black dog that was attacking the sheep and the black dog that was in my head. You can see some remnants around the skeleton over there. I came out here, rolled out the swag with the rifle and the thermal gear and thought, if it comes into this paddock, I'll get it. Eventually, it was a local hunter who found and shot the animal. I seen the size of this dog and held it up, you know. It was just, yeah, something I'll never forget, that's for sure probably the third best day of my life after the, my two daughters being born. While it brings some farmers relief, what we never see is the act of killing wild dogs or dingoes. One method is through trapping, and it can be brutal. And the first thing that we heard was the rattling of the chain that was stuck to this dingo's foot and then, you know, your stomach drops. What you're seeing is not illegal. It's being carried out by the Victorian government as part of its wild dog management program. This animal is caught in a foothold trap. For up to 13 hours, it becomes increasingly distressed as it tries to break free. Its struggle captured on secret recordings. 
The task of ending its suffering falls to a government wild dog controller. He moves to find a clean shot. Killings like these are rarely seen by the public, but they are routine in designated parts of Victoria and several other states. Alex Livingston has become accustomed to chilly mornings in the Victorian high country. I suppose in my youth I went through a bit more of an activist phase, but I think with maturity <laughs> I have realised that the only way that we're really going to move forward is by finding the commonalities that we share. Oh, Baba, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Today she's heading to a spot a few kilometres from Paul Diamond's farm and a designated trapping area. I think that wild dog management programs are in effect dingo eradication programs. I don't think most of the public is aware of what is going on. So where are we now? It was here where earlier this year Alex and a colleague planted hidden cameras to capture the foothold traps in action. In Victoria they have to be a padded jaw, so it's a very thin rubber pad. <laughs> Alex returned to the traps each morning. That sound of the, yeah, terror, the terror in there cries was just like a really difficult thing to to witness for the first time and to know that the the best way to get a result for these animals and their entire species is is to leave them behind but knowing that every instinct is telling you release them let them go One by one, over two weeks, she saw six animals trapped. Alex says most of the animals struggled for hours before they died. It was pretty difficult to just see that this beautiful animal who could have lived a, a long life had just been trapped, suffered the worst kind of fate that anyone could imagine and then shot in the head and just left there to, to rot, basically. Wild dog controllers must check the traps within 24 hours. The Environment Department says trapping complies with animal cruelty laws and is only used on public land bordering farms where attacks on livestock have occurred. So this is one of the videos that was supplied to us and we just wanted to show you and sort of just gauge your reaction if you just want to hit fire. Yeah. What I don't like seeing is the distress the animal's in. He's about to put it down. That's the first time I've ever seen footage of a trapped dog, that's for sure, because I've never trapped a dog myself. But half of me saying that, you know, experienced a bit of trauma and it's the back end of its life, half of me is going, what's it done? I feel like I've got two sides. I've got pet dogs that I thought of when I saw that video, but then I've also got, let's call them pet sheep, that I care for, that I see what that thing can do to. So Alex, I'm just gonna pass you some photos that were given to us by one of the local farmers um, of some sheep who were attacked by what he calls wild dogs. What's your feeling when you see those kinds of photos? I think anyone seeing the individual consequences for those animals would feel deeply distressed. But I don't think that causing more suffering to another species is the answer, particularly not a threatened native species. 
There are over 22 million livestock on Victorian farms. In the last year, about 1,200 were reported killed by wild dogs. Around the same period, nearly 1,400 wild dogs, or dingoes, were killed through trapping and hunting programs. It's unknown how many died from poison baiting. Alex runs an initiative called Defend the Wild, a coalition of groups fighting to preserve native wildlife. She wants the Victorian government to abolish its trapping programs. I would love to see governments realising that there can be investment into non-lethal solutions. If those things were stopped, I think there'd be more stock losses and uh, harming to animals across the country. Paul Diamond says he has tried non-lethal methods such as training alpacas to guard his sheep from attacks to limited effect. One bodyguard or several bodyguards in, with a president, you know, JFK still got shot, didn't he? As it stands, trapping is legal in every mainland state and territory. In Victoria, the government walks a fine line. Pure dingoes are a protected and threatened species, but it is legal to trap and kill them on or near private land. On the other hand, wild dogs are actively killed through shooting and poison baiting programs at a cost of $6 million over four years. We're heading to what's called a bounty collection day. So this happens about once a month here in Mansfield. And what happens is the hunters who've killed a wild dog will bring in the body parts and exchange them for $120 each. So we're just gonna head along and see if any of these guys will talk to us. How many dogs? Six. 70 foxes, six dogs. The Bounty Program has received nearly 5,000 wild dog pelts since 2011, although today the majority are foxes. Rough one here, haven't you? No one here would speak to 7.30 on camera, but local farmers told us the hunters are doing them a favour. One, two, two. They view wild dogs as a feral pest, one that preys not only on livestock, but on native animals like koalas and wallabies. So we've got your bank details on file. Yep, yep. And they have but there are others who take a very different view and say these animals aren't wild dogs at all. Dingoes have roamed the country for millennia. They are apex predators. That means they're at the top of the food chain, keeping feral animals in check. After colonisation, some began breeding with domestic dogs, creating new dingo hybrids. As they began to encroach on farms, a bounty was introduced, and over time, a new term emerged. The word dingo has gradually been written out of, of, of public language and been replaced by the term wild dog. And um, it's, a, it's, it's really a, a, a branding exercise, I think. We call them wild dogs when they're inconvenient and we call them dingoes when we want to put them on postcards. Biologist Mike Letnick has spent much of his career researching dingoes. We're here today in the mountains and we're setting up some cameras to do a survey of um, dingo and, and other mammal populations. Last year, he co-authored a national study which tested the DNA of 5,000 wild canines of various colour and appearance and found just 0.5% were feral dogs. 99% of the animals were genetically more than half dingo, while more than 60% were pure dingoes. They look like dingoes, they act like dingoes. And it's not true that we have, you know, these feral dogs running all around the country. But when is a dingo a dingo? Some people say, oh, it's 75%. Some people say it's 50%. I don't know where you want to call it, but by and large, most of the animals out there are predominantly dingoes. Paul Diamond remains convinced that the animal that attacked his flock was a wild dog. But at the same time, if it was a purebred dingo, would, would I have still done the same thing? Well, of course, like, I've got to protect my livestock. 
The Environment Department says it is testing the DNA of the animals killed through its trapping programs to determine the level of hybridisation. The results are yet to be released. In the long-running debate over dingo management, some voices have been drowned out. Today's sacred fire is about the story of the dingo, of the burnang of the Kaal. Burnang and Kaal are the language names that represent what we know as the dingo. Yaren Cousins Bundle is a proud Gundijmurra, Japurang, Yuen and Bidjara woman. She says First Nations groups across the country have an enduring connection to the dingo. The dingo's um, place of belonging was right beside us and, and all around us. They were free to come and go as they pleased, but they were so clever that they lived with us and they supported us and we supported them. But dingoes no longer roam her country in Victoria's west. It's one of several regions across Australia where they are thought to be extinct. There is no data showing how many dingoes remain in the wild. They couldn't get away with shooting us anymore, but they're getting away with shooting our countrymen, our countrywomen, the Burnang. In 2020, three traditional owner groups called on the Victorian government to explore reintroducing dingoes in Garryward, or the Grampians National Park, just east of here. The proposal was swiftly abandoned after intense backlash from the local farming community. You know, we need to eat. We, we love the farmers and the work that they do to feed Australia. But we're not compromising on the values of our love for country and what is right anymore. Their lie has gone on long enough and it's actually ruining what Australia is. The predicament confronting the Victorian government cuts to the core of Australia's national identity. How to balance the needs of the farming community, the country's first peoples, and an iconic native species. For now, the path forward seems to rely on finding common ground. Maybe this property is not suited to sheep, but then will the wild dogs come for my calves? You know, are they, where's it gonna stop? They tried to get rid of them just like our people, but we're still here. They have been the ancient guardians of our country. And they live alongside us for thousands and thousands of years. And on our blood, we'll roam again. <laughs> <laughs>